Okay, so how is everyone today? So last night, the first online homework was due. That is to say, the web assigned thing. Good. Uh, just now, the first written homeworks are due. And uh, from now on, there'll be written homeworks due at the beginning of every lecture. Uh, there is no quiz this week, but there is a quiz next week. And then from then on, there will be a quiz every week. Any questions about any of that? No questions? OK. So today is the 28th. And last time, uh, we left, yes? So if you completely neglected to turn all four of those in today, you're out 40 points. Uh, well, yeah, we're going to, you're going to have, some of these are going to be graded by hand, and some of them are going to be checked for completion. The ones that are graded by hand are out of 10. The ones that are checked for completion are out of 1. So if you're, they're not turned in, then you're going to get zeros for, for all of these. Whether or not they're 0 out of 1 or 0 out of 10 is not clear yet. Right. Uh, that being said, there's going to be approximately 30 graded by hand and approximately 90 checked for completion. We're going to drop 3 of the one category and 9 of the other. So this won't No. No. This, this uh, for your course grade, this represents like 0 0.1 points. Okay. Like if you, if you just didn't do this just now, then then now you can get at most a 99.8 or something like that. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, so last time uh, we were talking about uh, radicals. And to remind you, uh, there were even and odd uh, cases. So. I'll just summarize this with a, with a, um, the following comment: that even radicals require non-negative inputs. Odd radicals uh, accept any input. So to be clear, what's the difference between non-negative and positive? What is it? There is a difference. Zero, right? Zero is non-negative. Is zero positive? No. It is not. So uh, that means that an even radical can accept zero or anything positive. So for example, I could ask, uh, what's the square root of, say, um, 49? Seven. Seven. And part of the definition of square root and radicals generally is that um, there is only one square root of 49. Okay, and it is, it's 7. So now I agree entirely that if you were to square negative 7, that the negatives would cancel, and then you'd have 7 times 7, and that would be 49 also. I agree. But negative 7 is not the square root of 49. 7 is, and that's the only one. So it's not proper to say something like plus or minus 7. OK? What's the correct response to this prompt? The square root of, say, negative 36. That this is undefined. This is undefined. OK. What is? Uh, the cube root of 
Um, how about 64? It's 4, right? It's 4 because uh, 4 times 4, that's 2 of them, that's 16, and then you multiply 16 by yet another 4, and, and that's 64. So that's 4. Now how about, how about this one? Uh, the cube root of negative 8. Negative 2. But wait a second. I thought we just got finished saying that you can't put negative things into radicals. Ah, right. What, what is the radical number for this one? 3, which is odd. So such radicals accept any input. So this is negative 2. Good. Any question about this? OK. Another bit of notation is um, the following. Let n and m be in the naturals. And can you remind me, what, is, what does that mean in the naturals? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, the positive integers. Let uh, n and m be in the naturals. Uh, we're going to require that m is not 0. And we're also going to require that n divided by m is simplified. What do I mean by that, simplified? They have no common factors. So like 2 over 3 would be fine. But 20 over 30, we're not talking about that. Not like that. So first is that we have this definition, x to 1 over n. So this notation means it means the nth root of x. So what I'm telling you is that, is that this is just another way to write that. They're, they're synonyms. And because this nth root um, behaves differently with regard to whether n is even or odd, that means that this has inherits that same, that, that same behavior, right? So in particular, if, if you were to write, uh, say, w to 1 half, how do you write that with a radical? square root of w. Okay, and to the statement x to exponent m divided by n. So the difference here is that, uh, <laughs> oops. So because I did it that way and that way, I'm going to change this one. It's still true. What I wrote is still just as true, but it's a little confusing. So I'm going to say m over n is simplified. And here, this needs to say, I'm so sorry for doing this, n is 0, since I made n the denominator. So now, this x to m over n means, uh, means the nth root of x raised to the mth exponent. OK, so this, what I'm telling you is that this is just nice notation for that. OK, as a result, I could say, OK, please evaluate for me what is, uh, say, 16 to uh, 1 half. What is that? the square root of 16, which is what? 4. OK. How about, um, how about what is, what's another one? Negative 27 to exponent 1 third. Negative 3. Because if you were to write this as a radical, 
it's asking about the cube root of negative 27. So is it okay to be putting a negative thing inside of a cube root? Yeah, because that's an odd radical. And then now you just have to you know, sort of figure out which one it is. Most of the ones that we give you have an integer answer. So is it 2? <laughs> no, because 2 times 2 times 2 would be 8. Is it 3? 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. That's good. But it's not 3, it's negative, negative 3. Good. OK, what about, um, what about negative 27 to 1 fourth? This is undefined. Why? Right. Because this, this is corresponding to fourth radical which is an even radical, and even radicals cannot accept negative inputs, so the correct response to this is that this is undefined. Yes? Uh, no, it's this one, not the other way. The reason why it has to be this one is because the radical has to be processed first. Radical first, then, then exponent. Yeah. They are the same when x is positive. Then it doesn't matter. But when x is negative, then it can matter. So to, to, to answer your question directly, how about this one? Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do this one. Okay, so how about um, 32 and I want you to do it to exponent 3 fifths. And I want you to do this without a calculator. It, it's 8. So there, what this is requesting is a, it's requesting a, a two-step process. So this is equal to, so what's the radical thing? What, what radical am I going to write? Fifth radical of 32, and then what am I going to do? Raise all of that to third power. So this is just a nicer way to write that. So what's the fifth root of 32? It's 2. And then 2 cubed is 8. Very good. Uh, how about, uh, how about, how about this one? Negative 8 to exponent 4 over 3. And again, without, without a calculator. So this kind is particularly fun to give to students because um, it can give you some enlightenment about that calculator that is for some of you a psychological crutch. So, so what is 8 to the 1 third? It's negative 2. And then what is negative 2 to exponent 4? 16. So the answer is 16. Let's see what the calculator has to say about it.
So typing that into the calculator there, what's the calculator going to say? It's going to say, <laughs> it blew up. Can't do it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The radical thing? Yeah. These are synonyms, right? What I mean to say is that it, it, it could have just as well looked like this. We could have taken this path, it would have been just the same. Does that, does that answer it? No, I was just wondering why wonder is acceptable, why you can write it that way. Because they're synonyms. I'm just mixing it up just so you can see them being used this way and also that way. Other questions? Okay, good. Now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, now I have it. So now we have <coughs> conjugate. The conjugate of expression A plus B is expression what? What's the conjugate of A plus B? B plus A Sorry? B plus A. A minus B. So that is to say that you take this, the second thing, the second thing, uh, and you flip an add to a subtract. So similarly, what is the conjugate of A minus B? A plus B. So I could, I could say, okay, what's the conjugate of 3x plus 5? What's its conjugate? 3x minus 5. Okay. What's the conjugate of 4y minus 5w? 4y plus 5w. What's the conjugate of uh, 2 plus the square root of 3? Two minus the square root of three. So these are conjugate expressions. They're conjugate to each other. So now, um, the reason for bringing this up is because I'd like for you to observe this uh, neat thing. What if we take two plus the square root of three and we multiply it by two minus the square root of three? So reason, for reasons that I hope are obvious, this particular kind of thing is called the product of conjugates because these two things are conjugates and we're computing their product. So um, I'm going to carry out this multiplication. So I am aware that some of you know a shortcut to doing this, a nice little shortcut called FOIL, but I'm going to plead ignorance and say I don't know what that's, what that's about. And I'm going to do it the long way first. So I'm going to take this and distribute it in. So I'm going to give a copy of this to that too, and also a copy to this uh, square root of 3 <clears throat> so that it looks like 2 plus square root 3 multiplied by 2 and then minus 2 plus square root 3 multiplied by square root 3. And I want to multiply this out even further. So now what do I need to do? So this is called distribution because you gave a copy of this to that one and also to that one, just like you're handing things out. You get a 2 plus square root 3, you get a 2 plus square root 3. Okay. Now, now what? Now you do it the other way, right? You distribute to the right. So that way for that one and that way for that one. 
So 2 times 2, that's 4, and then plus 2 square root 3. And then minus, taking that in, 2 square root 3, and then plus the square root of 3 squared. So what's the square root of 3 squared? It's 3, right? So that this would be 4 plus 2 square root 3 minus 2 square root 3 plus 3. And now we can carry out the subtraction, distribute the subtraction, drop all the parentheses, and get what? 4 plus 2 square root 3 minus 2 square root 3 uh, minus 3. So what will happen to these terms in the middle? They cancel. So what I want you to observe is that right here, all of these canceled, these things canceled, and right here, all of the other radicals canceled. So by the time we get to the last step, all the radicals are gone. All the square roots are gone. Okay, that's the neat trick of, of, of multiplying products of conjugates where one of them has a radical, is that when you do all this, because of the way the algebra ends up working out, all the radicals go away. Okay? So as a result, as a result, I could say, well, uh, suppose I want you to follow these instructions. I want you to rationalize the denominator. And let's say that it's that I've given you this, something like 5 over 13 plus the square root of 14. So does, does 14 have an integer square root? Nah, right? It doesn't. Right? Because 3 squared is 9, so it's not 3. And 4 squared is 16, so it's not 4, and it's between those two, so there isn't one. OK. So we want to rationalize the denominator, which is code for saying, I don't want any radicals in the denominator by the time you're finished. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression and we're going to multiply it by the only thing that you can multiply by that doesn't change it. What's the only thing you can multiply by? One. If we were to multiply by two, that'd be changing it, right? If we multiplied it by anything but one, that'd be changing it. So we're going to multiply by one. But the trick is, and I heard some of y'all say it, the trick is being very uh, clever about choosing the way we're going to write one. So for example, one way we could write one is we could say something like 8 over 8. That's one. 80 over 80 is also one. What we want to get rid of all of the radicals in the denominator what do we want to be in the denominator? 13 minus the square root of 14, right? Because if we could multiply by the conjugate, then that would, that would get rid of all the radicals in the denominator. But you can't just, you can't just arbitrarily multiply the denominator by that much, what else must you do? Do the same thing in the numerator. So what I want you to observe is that, <clears throat> is that this one is in red, and so is this. This is also one. It's kind of a weird way to write one, but it is one. OK. So let's carry out that multiplication. So in the numerator, it would look like 5 multiplied by 13 minus square root 14. And in the denominator, 13 plus square root 14 multiplied by 13 minus square root 14. 
and we want to carry out all that arithmetic. So in the numerator, that'd be 65 minus the square root of 14, uh, minus 5 square root of 14. And now here's where we watch slowly all of the radicals disappear in the denominator. If we perform the distribution, we get 13 plus the square root of 14 times 13 minus 13 plus the square root of 14 times the square root of 14. That's distributing this one to that one. And now I'll distribute the other way. So 13 times 13, what's that? 169. So 169 plus 13 square root 14. And then minus 13 square root 14. And then minus square root 14 squared. And so now look, it looks even worse now. Look at all the radicals that are all in the denominator everywhere, all over the place. What's going to happen to these? They cancel because of the add subtract thingy. And then what happens to that one? It squares away. So that this is 169 minus 14, which is 155. So did we rationalize the denominator? Did we get rid of all the radicals? We did it. Yes? Can we also simplify it further to 65, 5, and then 5 are all? Divisible by 5? Yeah, let's do that. So if we, if we do that, uh, that's 31, right? So then that would be, what, 13 minus the square root of 14 over 31. Other questions? Yes? You can use foil because we're going to do foil today. <laughs> we're going to do foil next. <laughs> so aren't you getting tired of this distribute all the time thingy? Yeah, we're tired of it. Good. That's, that's the point, part of the point of doing it right here. So now we're in the next section, section 1.4. Uh, so this is section 1.4, which is called something like polynomials. Okay, so here it is, FOIL. So in the first place, a binomial... No meal, is an expression... with two terms. So something that looks like this. A plus B. So this is a term and this is a term. Now to make sure something is clear as an aside, you can also have things that look like A multiplied by B, but these things are not called terms. That's not a term, and that's not a term. What are these individual A's and B's called? You, you know, but you just don't know that you know. <coughs> They're called factors. So what I'm telling you is that terms are things that are separated by pluses. Factors are things that are separated by dots. OK. So the product of 
of two binomials looks like this, a plus b multiplied by c plus d. Well, we've already done this a couple times on the previous pages, so let's do it one more time, and in a sense, once and for all. So we'll distribute this one to that one and to that one. So that it looks like a plus b multiply c plus a plus b multiply d. So that's a, a distribution to the right. So now we'll do a distribu two distributions to the left. So that it looks like a times c plus b times c plus a times d plus b times d. So now we have four terms. One, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to say that it's a times c plus a times d plus b times c plus b times d. So what did I do between these two lines here? Right, of the middle ones. That is to say, this one went here, and this one went here. Is it permissible to change their order? Yeah, because addition commutes. So we, could mo we can move those around. So a plus b multiplied by c plus d. Here is a formula that you're now expected to memorize, if you didn't know it already. So this formula is called the FOIL formula for the following reason. So concerning these two binomials and concerning the first one, which term is first? A is the first term. And in this one, which one is first? C. So A and C are the first ones, are the first terms. That's why this one is called the F term. Now, considering these four all together, A, B, C, D, which two terms are on the outside? A and D are outside. So here's A, D. This one is referred to as the O term. And taking these four together, which two are on the inside? B and C are on the inside, so this is called the I term. And then which two, in this one, which one is last? And in this one, which one is last? D. So BD, this one is called the last term. So that's why this formula is called FOIL. I'm not sure I follow. Yeah, yeah. This this one is phi all, right? That's what this one is. That's fine. I was always first, inner, outer, last, but it doesn't make this, sense. The, the answer to the question is that it doesn't matter because addition commutes. Right. It doesn't matter. So, uh, so as a result, I could ask the question. I could say, well, how about, how about uh, x plus 7? multiplied by x plus um, 5. So this would be the sum of four things, right? because this is the product of two binomials. So what's the f term? x squared. What's the o term? 5x. What's the i term? 7x. And the l term? 35. Now, can we collect like terms? Yeah, the ones in the middle are alike. So that we could say that this is x squared plus 12x plus 35. Any question about that one? 
Okay. <clears throat> we could do, say, another one. How about, um, <clears throat> how about, what do I like? 3w plus uh, 4y multiplied by 2w plus 5y. Okay, well, what's the F term? 6w squared. The O term? 3w5y, which I'll write as 15wy. What's the I term? 8wy. And then what's the O term? 20y squared. Good. And then can anything be collected? Yeah, because these ones in the middle are alike. So 6w squared plus 23wy plus 20y squared. Any question about this one? Okay. So now on to how about this nice formula? This is called the product of conjugates formula. So if you have something that looks like a plus B multiplied by A minus B, which is, of course, what we were doing on the previous pages a couple pages ago with the radicals. Then let's come up with, with the formula for this. So according to FOIL, according to FOIL, this should be the sum of um, four things. So what's the F term? A squared. What's the O term? Minus AB, right? Because it's A multiplied by negative B. So minus AB. What's the I term? Plus AB. And then what's the L term? Minus B squared. Now, can anything be simplified? Right, those cancel. So what's left? A squared minus B squared. So here's a formula that you're now expected to memorize. And the way that that's said out loud is that the product of, product of conjugates is the difference of squares. Okay, because that's a square, that's a square, and we're computing their difference, <laughs> right? So the product of conjugates is the difference of squares. So for example, I could say, what about uh, two w plus five z multiplied by two w minus 5z. <coughs> so on the one hand, you could you could uh, just look at this and say, well, I'm not even going to remember that whole conjugate thing. And you could just use FOIL, right? The, it would still work. There'd be nothing wrong with it. But do you observe that these two 
binomials are conjugates of each other. This one looks like this one looks like a plus b, and this one looks like a minus b. So this is the product of conjugates. But even if you you didn't recognize that, you could still use FOIL. So now I'm going to write something, and I want you to tell me whether or not I have it correct. So I remember that it's the difference of <coughs> squares. So 2w squared minus 5z squared. So do I have it right? Why not? Look, it's like that. a squared minus b squared. And right. It's, it's, it's all of this squared and all of that squared. Right. That is to say that these are like little little slots. Whatever I'm covering up with my with this finger, that's what has to be squared. If I'm covering up a 7, it's going to have to be 7 squared. If I'm covering up a giraffe, well, we'll see what we can do, right? So then I'm covering up a 2w. That's what must be squared. So what is 2w all squared? 4w squared and then minus 25z squared. Any question about this? Okay, what about, whenever I do that, I see like a flash. Does something, ha is something happening over there? It just becomes weird? Okay. My foot? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so how about, uh, how about, um, 5 minus the square root of uh, 11 multiplied by 5 plus the square root of 11. So is this the product of conjugates? It is, but look, this one says plus and that one says minus. So it says plus first and then minus, and this is minus first and then plus. Ah, but, but multiplication commutes, which means I can take these two factors that I'm covering up, and we could commute them and put them in the other order. So it doesn't matter if the minus one comes first or the plus one, it doesn't matter. So again, you could use FOIL, or you could use three distributions and a commutation like we did four pages ago. Or perhaps you could recognize that this is the product of conjugates, so that it would be five squared uh, minus square root of 11 squared. And then, now this simplifies nicely to, what, 25 and then minus 11, which is 14. So, so it's neat that the product of conjugates formula, when you're dealing with these radicals, causes all the radicals to cancel away. That's what we were using a couple pages ago. Any question about this? Okay. So here's another thing. Formula. And this is a formula that I'll just warn you now, students historically mess this up. Th so what I'm telling you is that this is a point uh, where, where perhaps you should have a heightened attention. Okay, because students, students mess this up a lot. So what if we do a plus b all squared? Let's come up with a, with a formula for this. Well, let's recall. Uh, the square, what does that mean? It means multiply by itself. It means make two copies of what, whatever it is that we're covering up. Make two copies of it and then multiply them together. If that was, instead of being a 2, if it was a 22, then we'd make 22 copies and then multiply them all together. That's what it is saying. So to do this, what's being requested is you do a plus b multiplied by a plus b. That's what that means. And then, oh, this is the product of binomials. 
and we can use FOIL for that. How convenient. So what's the F term? A squared. And then what's the O term? A, B. What's the I term? A, B. And what's the L term? B squared. So can anything be collected? The A, B. So then, here we have A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. So this is a formula now that you're expected to memorize. So now I'm going to write something that is incorrect. So if you're going to copy what I'm about to write, please carefully note that it is incorrect. So this is, this is the mistake that students make. They look at this and say, okay, uh, a plus b squared, I think that is, I think the 2 is going to distribute to the a and also to the b so that it looks like a squared plus b squared. What, what has student forgotten here? The 2ab. So this is, this is just flat out wrong. So this is wrong. <clears> okay, <throat> yeah, because you're 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 leaving out the 2ab. Now, the thing is is that this other one is true. What if I change it to a multiply b and square it? Then what? then it works. Then it's a squared multiply b squared. That's true. <laughs> so what I want you to see is that it does kind of look like it ought to work a little bit, at least visually. This is the one that works that way. This one does not. As a result, I could say, well, how about how about 3x plus 5 and we square it? Well, on the one hand, you could just forget this formula. You just say, nope, I'm just eh, not going to do it. And you could just use FOIL. You could just, you could just do 3x plus 5 multiplied by another 3x plus 5 and just FOIL. Alternatively, you could say, well, I recognize that it's that formula, so it would be 3x, square that, plus twice 3x times 5, plus 5, square that. And then just carry this out now. So that'd be 9x squared plus 30x plus 25. Any questions? Okay, so that's all for today. I'll see you on Wednesday.